Uh, thank you for coming to everyone. Uh, I must warn you that this is my first technical talk, so I may be a little nervous. Also the first time here at WADEC, but so far I'm very happy. And, um, well, let's see how it works. And, well, I wanted to talk about uh, building a flag pack based app store, meaning that, well, I will uh, make a little, I will talk a little bit about myself. I work as a Java backend software engineer in a public university in Barcelona. Uh, I'm a Linux user, I use Linux at home and at work, but uh, my main uh, job is not related to open source. Uh, but uh, for the last year, I've been involved uh, a little bit uh, with the Flagpack community. And I must say that uh, they are very welcome to newcomers and very open to ideas for foreigners like me. And that's one of the reasons that I'm here today. Um, I said already that this is my first talk and first WODEC. And well, um, Alex presented uh, Flap Hub um, before, and it's been just uh, maybe three or four months since all this began, and it was mainly focused uh, in the developer side, how to make automated build process, and how to make these bundles in uh, Flatpak repo, so GNOME software or other software like KDE Discover um, could see that and present to the actual users of uh, Linux. Uh, what I've been more centered for this year, it's more um, what happens with uh, users that are not Linux users, uh, or maybe they don't have the last versions of the software, so they, don't, they won't see um, the Flagpack applications. And what happens, for example, for search engines like Google, they won't see this information. That's why I uh, asked uh, the Flatpak team if they were thinking about making a web application so you could browse the appli existing applications in Flatpak repos and present information to users and maybe make it easier to install the applications. And uh, this is the kind of uh, feeling that I had that it's, it could be useful to have an application to do that, a web application, browser-based. Uh, and also, re after reading a little bit about how to build communities, I think a web application, uh, maybe not just for this purpose of installing applications, also it could build a community of users and developers, the same as Amazon has with the products that sometimes uh, when I want to buy something, first thing I do is to look for the reviews to see if that product is good or bad. Um, so FlapHub or another um, similar website could be also a reference in the Linux world to find this information and to share um, your feelings about applications. I also could have questions and answers and direct feedback from the developers. And for me also something very important is that this application or the final GNOM software, whatever, uh, should have um, a system to provide, uh, well, a system to, to help developers or just to be able to sell applications. I won't focus on this part of, the, uh, of this in the talk because uh, Richard is gonna talk all the time about this and I prefer that we delay this for later. But also in my opinion, FlagHub or whatever website it is, should be also open for closed source applications because users will want to have an easy way to buy also closed source applications. And if they trust a system for open source, they might trust the same system for closed source in the moment of payments and this, and I think, in my opinion, it could be very useful to have it. Um, well, now, as I said, um, if 
for the last months, I work a little bit in a personal project, like a proof of concept about this web application. Um, I thought it was going to be very easy, but in the end, it's a lot of pieces that much get together. Like the actual website is not super nice. I'm working on a new version. But the process of taking the information from the Flatpak repo, parsing in a database, and then presenting it to the user, all these deployed in, um, in Docker, in, in DigitalOcean. Well, it took a while because I'm doing these things in my spare time. Um, it took a while. But uh, if you want to take a look of the code, you can just go to this um, GitHub um, repo. And we can take a look of the actual thing now, if you want. Uh, well, the resolution is quite high, wide, but these are right now all the applications that are in uh, Lab and Hub. As um, Alex said, there are like 60 something. They are mainly games, and, but it's, it's growing. I mean, first time I, I took the information from the repo, they were like 40 something, and little by little, uh, it's, uh, the list is growing. Even that, in my opinion, all the process of publishing apps should be a little bit better explained because right now it's a little bit tricky. Um, and well, this application has just two screens. This is to browse the applications. And then if I see something that I like, uh, we say like this, if it works, yeah. It will present the information that's obtained from the repo. And with the install button, it will just download the Flatpak ref file that then will be opened by GNOME software or whatever. This will be improved, like also putting like how to install from command line, which is very easy to do. And I would like also to add uh, reviews and screenshots and other stuff. But um, the purpose of this was how could we do something so users can easily find applications, also for search engines. And um, if I can really invest more time or have contributions, uh, how could we build a community over this in the sense of this? That a central place where people can obtain information and share um, information about the applications they like. And in the future, it could be other things like um, themes or professional services about Linux. Um, it could be also podcasts, uh, many things. I mean, uh, whatever they have in Google Play or the Apple Store, I think Linux can have the same or even better. And it's just um, for us to to make it happen and to build a community around it. Oh, sorry. I wanted to go back to slides. And now it was more like the open debate. Uh, what do you think? Um, is this going to work? Mm. If you talk, you have points for your um, for your team, um, I don't remember the names. I think it was Gryffindor and this. <laughs> and I don't know any magic trick, but if somebody does, we have five points. No, I think it's too complicated. What I thought is that this could be also an Electron application. And then it could do that. It could even uh, probably install the software without using GNOME software. 
uh, that's, and also if it also could be a flag pack application, that would be perfect. But right now I don't know how to do it. <laughs> but if somebody wants to step in, perfect. Uh, the GitHub repo is, uh, is uh, here. It's just my nickname. Sure, sure, sure. I just wanted to do the UI to present the uh, themes in a different section. But at the beginning, uh, the themes and the run times were appearing here because it's all the same upstream information. Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, I thought I that maybe are. for the NVIDIA drivers, these are kind of run times, and a user must do it explicitly, not uh, to use it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it has a PostgreSQL database, uh, Nginx, and uh, it just needs um, Java. That's it. Yeah. Uh, it's all Dockerized, so it's I can give you. It's for static content and reverse proxy, yeah, yes. So But if you have Docker in the machine, I give you a Docker Compose, yeah, and that's it. Well, <laughs> just uh, let me finish it a little bit more, because myself, I'm, I'm not happy with this just yet. It was more like a proof but of concept. Kind of, yeah, nice way yeah. To browse, that's way more like what we've got wrong. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it tends to be like a list of stuff. Well, we can talk now in August, and yeah. I will try to spend some time now time in holidays. Uh, to I, mean, I, I guess my point is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Sure, sure, but, well, uh, yeah. Also, uh, I began, uh, actually, all this I did it last year with static content, um, and it is done with a framework called Angular that changed a lot in the last six months, and some widgets called Angular Material. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in the process of migration to material design, some one of some libraries, and it could take some weeks. But but I'm happy you were interested because um, I think it could be useful. Well, uh, uh, in no, no, no. Um, it used to be static um, info, but I wrote a Java library to parse the XML. So this is an automatic process. Every two hours, it will automatically um, get the information and publish it here. Uh, well, I put it in a database, and then I. Well, with the app, I can, with the database, I can publish and unpublish very easily. I can add uh, things, uh, download th um, stats. It's. Uh, I guess it's just web stuff for yeah. easy to do with SQL. Huh. Sure. Sure. Well, is it uh, isn't the 
it's in the list of the to do. So in the upstream, uh, you, I have the translation of everything. And it's just a question of adding this to the database. And in the web application, it's a REST API. And I could say, give me the information in this language. And I could show it. And the data is there. So it's a question of showing it uh, in a. Also, did you look at the, the screenshotting? Because I know it is there. I haven't. So we added like caching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. I saw it. Um, I have a question myself. Uh, how was the status of the publisher app? Uh, Excuse me? The status of the publisher app uh, functionality there? Do you have any uh, other button on the right? The button there? Ah, sorry. All this is, uh, is copy and paste of a template application, and right now it does nothing. It raises the discussion that uh, Perfect is decentralized by, by design, and you have decentralized stores. And how do you guarantee that the, uh, the apps which are published are actually verified by their developers? Yeah. I have Audacity here, and it's not my Audacity, which I developed myself. Yeah. So, so this is also an important discussion for us. That's just a generic problem with the laptop. Yeah. Uh, and even more so when it's payment involved. Right. Right. I, I do have an idea that not about payment, but um, a thought I had is we could use the web. If, if we had a search engine that could just search for any link to a flat pack, stick it in a database and put a nice front end on it, then you would have genuinely decentralized distribution. You could see which site it came from and what it was. Obviously, you can't verify that it's the real but one. But there's no trust model. Sure. You're also going to find trust. Flat pack yeah, drugs for the same app in multiple places. True. Actually, it happens because now it's only showing the information in uh, Flat Hub. But when I was testing, I was also taking information from the KD repo and from the endless repo. And I end up having like three copies of the same application. And yeah, it's. I suppose you can get based on the ID of the app. So if the same ID appears in three repos, you can say this app is available from here, here, and here. Yeah, it could be, uh, it could have a backend thing that some administration says this is the main one no. or well, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of ways to decentralize it so we don't end up with a single mm. point of uh, control it's a good thing because mm. then the app also can say that I am the upstream well yeah I mean I, 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 I think decentralization is important also it, it, it's a very uh, conflict area I mean decentralization is very much what open source is about but from a user experience point of view, it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's hard. It could be also like Amazon. Sometimes you buy in the website, and it's Amazon delivering and everything. But sometimes it's, it's delivered by another company. They say that. And here it could say uh, distributed by Flat Hub or distributed by KD Repo or whatever. It is could be the central place, but then it will show, advertise where it comes from. Also, I would like to add information about the permissions that the app needs, and this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's important that we avoid having something like the iTunes store, where Apple exerts control over that. If they don't like you, you can't have your app there. Hmm. Well, they only exert control because they're the only ones that you can get an app from. True. With Flatpak, that's not true. Even right. if you use Flatpak, you can still use it just in other repos. Yeah, so we are on time. Sorry. Sign. <laughs> so thank you very much.